we are live now. So this is Indie Talk with Jesse and Jaron featuring MAW announcer and commissioner Brian Sager. So <laughs> how's guys, it going? How Good. Good. Going? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Excited. Yeah, excited. Uh, yeah. It's WrestleMania weekend, right, guys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wrestling right now. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for uh, AJ Styles and uh, Edge this weekend. That's definitely one I'm looking for. And obviously, Kevin and Steve as well. So, or Stone Cold. So, yeah. That should yeah. be interesting. I'm looking forward to that, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm yeah. interested in seeing who uh, Seth Rollins gets. <laughs> For his mystery opponent, there's a lot of speculation going on. You know, speculation, it doesn't hurt, you know, but I love how a lot of people think it's going to be Cody. And then you got all the, uh, then you got all the other people who don't think it's going to be Cody and nobody knows. So that's, that's what's awesome about it. It's like, no one knows. It might be a huge surprise. Everyone's saying, oh, I saw Cody at the, the hotel and. Yeah. Did, did you see Cody at the hotel? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Someone, someone was also saying that uh, Shane McMahon is going to be at the event. So, who knows? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's anybody's uh, guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know, well, I was thinking, like, if they do Shane, <laughs> it'd be kind of funny. Like, the crowd is going to be mm -hmm. pissed. Like, they're going to yeah. be like, Really, Shane? I like Shane. I don't got no beef with Shane. Uh, but, you know, some, some of the stuff's a little rocky, but you know, uh, I can see why a lot of fans have a little bit of a distaste for him or disdain for him lately. Especially if he comes into this spot, yeah, and puts, yeah. And puts himself good. over too. It's like, ooh, yeah, oh, that's for Maybe sure. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that would be. Uh, that would be one of those WWE. Hey, we uh, what Shane McMahon guys would be excited, and uh, it's like when they forced Goldberg down our throats. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> enough of enough of Goldberg. <laughs> Goldberg. The first time was good, and now it's just yeah. I don't think it's Goldberg's fault. It's just WWE and how they advertise them. So, yeah, it still looks like a million bucks for his age, though. Yeah, he's yeah, still he he in really good guy. shape for someone his age. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think lately they used, used him a little better. I thought, you know, he's coming in, putting over guys, which mm -hmm. is great. You know, just uh, unfortunately, a lot of friends, just the more vocal fans aren't mm -hmm. too particularly fond to see him out there. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Especially when he, you know, I was really. I was really upset when he dropped Wyatt on his head, and then, oh, they, they, yeah. then he went over. He went over on Wyatt, and that shouldn't have happened. That that no. definitely should not have happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, no. yeah, yeah. It's it's that. Well, he's he's done that to a couple people now with just winning world titles from people that should have gone into WrestleMania as a champion, like Kevin Owens and Bray Wyatt and. Uh, Oh, there's a few others in there, but yeah. I yeah. loved the stuff they did with Lesnar, though. Like when he came back yeah. and squashed Lesnar, that was great. And that, like, you know, and they, they had that go for a while and then, you know, drop it back to him at Mania. I thought that stuff was really good, I thought. Yeah. But yeah, that was, the, you know, unfortunately, just to, you know, you, you can only do so much. And he's limited, and the fans know he's limited, which isn't. That, that hurts him. So yeah. yeah. Yo, Dustin, what's up? Hey, Dustin. Hey, Dustin, how you doing? Yeah. I'm getting a lot of notifications now from people on the post that or the live that we're on right now. So that's that's a good thing. We got yeah. Brian Sager right here, guys. Yeah. All right. Hey. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting used to this thing now. That's like. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you're looking forward to AJ and uh, Edge. That's mm -hmm. gonna be a good one. That's gonna be a good one. Yeah. The other ones. Um. Oh well, yeah. Um, 
else what was about there? uh oh who is it uh the uh oh uh becky and uh bianca yeah i think that's that's, that's gonna awesome. be a good match that's gonna mm-hmm. be a really good match i think the roles are reversed personally but uh, i think becky should be the baby face because she yeah, I, fans I like her uh, no matter what. So it's like, why fight it? Why fight it? Why go against the grain, as I always say? Yeah, I think Bianca should be the heel. She'd make yeah. for a good heel. Yeah, and, but she makes a good baby face too. But I just think Becky's just so over, and Bianca's starting to really get to that level too, I feel. Yeah. And they both can work their asses off. So I think it's going to be great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, in the, in the comments sections here, uh, Stephen Harbick, aka Jackson Black of Tennessee All Pro Wrestling, says Becky versus Bianca will be good, and yeah, we oh, definitely agree. I agree. Yeah. And then Dubson says our favorite announcer, which I I definitely agree with that. We got Brian Sager. Man. Well, thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. have to say, I have to say, Laszlo is my favorite announcer. I don't know if you watch it. Yeah, that's true. I like me some Laszlo. He's a funny guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of good announcers, and I mean, I I miss uh, Matt Bird all the most. Purple shirt from Steel the Main. I was like, Where yeah, I like him too. I got to work with him one time. It was a lot of fun. Oh, good. Yeah, good yeah. Dude. Hey, he's an awesome dude. Yeah, but yeah. A uh, few few days ago on the 27th, uh, you were at Discover Pro Wrestling as the announcer. Uh, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, uh, Eric, uh, a lot of fun, a lot good, very good promoter. I really like uh, just how um, good he is to the guys, I guess you could say. Um, he's, you know... Pays me well, <laughs> which is always <laughs> yeah, nice. And, you know, there, you know, there's not a lot of places you go and work where you get to the back and there's food there. You know, you have catering there, and he had a lot of guys on hand to help set up, tear down. Um, so it's just a very pleasant experience to work for him. I just, I, you know, uh, just, I, I got nothing but respect there. And I have a lot of fun. It's fun to go to a show where. You're not the boss or one of the bosses, I should <laughs> say. And you can just kind of sit back and uh, go with the flow. So that's always fun. Too. Yeah, yeah. And the yeah, last always- fans, the fans there are tremendous. Mm-hmm. My gosh. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, yeah. so much fun. Yeah, yeah. Lively bunch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, it was, yeah, I was there. It was super lively. Everyone was into it and every single match. And yeah, it was. I think they they broke their record from their first show, like two hundred forty four or something. So it's pretty yeah. full now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We were uh, a couple of days ago on Wednesday. We we're talking to another man who was there, uh, Garrison Creed, about how he faced skits, and he was like, "Yeah, different different kind of wrestler, but I'm always uh, always prepared." And yeah, I, th- I think he did a good job there too. So. Yeah. Creed's a guy I think in a few years you're gonna see him on TV. You're gonna see him if not in WWE, AEW. He just did some stuff with NWA, yeah. which is awesome. Or maybe even Impact, we might see him on, you never know. And now that AEW owns ROH, you know, everyone's wondering why are you bringing all these guys and why are you buying all these guys, you know, come there. Your roster's overflowing. Well, now we know they <laughs> He bought our OH, so you know, yeah, two rosters to fill their brand now, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They got so much, they got they got uh dynamite and rampage and dark and elevation and now ROH, so yeah, yeah. they are back with shows now, so yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, wrestling, yeah, there's so much going on nowadays, you know? a lot more opportunities for guys than when back when I was working, so. Mm-hmm. I'm happy for everyone that's getting opportunities and showing what they can do because we got a lot of great talent here in our area. So, mm-hmm. yeah, there, I keep saying this. Uh, I think uh, Minnesota or even Midwest professional wrestling has never, never been as big as it has been since now. So it's it's just insane how 
big it has gotten. And I've been watching it since 2017, and it just continues to grow. So, yeah. And special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, Jonathan Shelton, a.k.a. Johnny Showtime from <laughs> Tennessee L Pro Wrestling, says any Mania match will be better than Jackson Black when he lost yet again this past <laughs> weekend. So, yeah, uh, Jackson Black and uh, Jonathan Showtime, a.k.a. Showtime, uh, had a match for Tennessee L Pro Wrestling. We had, we had both of them on their show, and they uh, – they uh, had some words with each other, so, <laughs> right. battle, so. Yeah. you never know what you're going to get on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel that uh, not to toot our own horn a little bit, but you know, you were there at DPW, and uh, you know, we had Rampage and System going at it. <laughs> they went thirty minutes. That's a feat yeah. nowadays, that especially you know to have the crowd for that long at that you know at that volume. So I thought that, you know, they just, he, just like I said, there's so much great talent right now and everyone's getting a chance to showcase what they can do. And man, they should be, they should be on WrestleMania after that, you know, that it's yeah. too bad. Nobody had that match should have been on Mania and damn, have enough yeah. many people watching. Yeah. 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 And it, you know so, <laughs> especially when that was, Hi, like, Eli. Oh, we got Eli in here. Eli McCoslin. Hey, yeah. MAW co owner. So, yeah. But one of the three. One of the three. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So I don't know if you guys are aware. I'm just going to put it out there. So, yeah, it's Eli, David, and then me, myself as well. You know, we're, we're like a trio of uh, the owners of MAW. And we kind of. We all have our little things that we do, and Eli plays. Eli's the booker, and David kind of handles um, sales and ha handling legends. He's our legend liaison. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm kind of like public relations, and then I also kind of, you know, <laughs> obviously do the ring announcing and stuff like that. <laughs> so, yeah, which I I didn't think I'd enjoy doing um, as much as I thought because um, it didn't really. That was that kind of happened organically. Um, on our very first show, uh, one of the, one of the people we were doing for the show for, he was going to do the ring announcing. I was going to kind of just stand back, hmm. and then eventually, what happened was we called an audible, and I took over on the ring announcing, and he kind of just came in for spots. Hmm. And then after this, after it was done, I was like, "Wow, this I like this actually. You know, this is kind of fun. I didn't think I would." And so I decided, you know, or we decided that, you know, I'll, I'll do it here and there. And then eventually now I do it all the time for our, for our shows, which, you know, um, uh, some days it's, a, it's a chore sometimes, you know, just like when things aren't going right behind the scenes, then I have to go out and put out a smile and, you know, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, as they say, the show must go on and someone's got to drive it. So, mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Why? Thank you for letting me do it. I've had a blast doing it. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 Every time I go to the show, I think you've you've done a great job, and the fans really get into it when you're the announcer. So definitely doing a great job of that, and then behind the scenes as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. He is a little biased, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll let you go, Jesse. All right. Favorite you city to Jesse? work in. <laughs> What's <laughs> your favorite city to work in? Favorite city to work in. A little biased on this one because uh, this is where I kind of started. I was in Cottage Grove. Mm -hmm. Small town, you know, in the Twin City area. Uh, but that's where I uh, had one of my first matches at the Cottage Grove Armory. So I always enjoy going back there whenever we don't go there much anymore. You know, I'm worried to be expensive to rent out. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah. I like going and then uh, uh, the Mounds Theater in St. Paul is another one too that I enjoy. And Faribault recently, I've really started to enjoy 
are terrible locations. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that I could go on and on with water now. Woodbridge <laughs> 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 Brewery, that they, they, that one's always fun. And just um, but if I had to narrow it down one, it would be Cottage Grove. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, MAW, they they've had so many locations now and they keep traveling. It's yeah, obviously a lot a lot of them are really good and it's, it's just yeah, awesome that you get to be a part of that and uh, announce for that as well. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, having, we're having a good time. You know, we're all on the same page. We're all working hard. The boys are working hard. The people that come and help us are working hard. And everyone's um, got a positive out, uh, you know, a positive attitude about it. You know, you know, there ain't no negative Nancys out there. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're all working together to try to give wrestling fans a good product. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 definitely. And especially, um, I, I gotta put a, I gotta put him over right here. Cause I don't know if he's watching, but our, our, um, our, um, our production guy Chavo, he's oh, just yeah. coming on board recently, and you've probably seen a lot of his production so far. Um, he's just been tremendous, and he's so easy to work with. Um, just a really good dude. So, mm -hmm. Chavo, if you're watching, I put you over, brother. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jaren, don't forget you still old Chavo a pitcher. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. won a contest, so it's only fair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you see him at the shows, buy him a beer, okay? Uh, he works <laughs> yeah, yeah. I met Chavo for the first time in person, and I, I didn't, I didn't realize he was going to be there, but he was at the the DPW show, and he's like, "Hey, you're Jaren," or. He's like, hey, you're Jaren, right? I was like, yeah. And he's like, I'm Chavo. I'm like, oh, you're Chavo. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a really good guy. We were talking for a second. And I was like, yeah, I'll make sure to get the, the autograph to you to, on the April 9th for uh, Wilmer Media. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's a good segue right there. Uh, well, what are you most excited for uh, about Wilmer Mania? Uh, a whole bunch of stuff. I'm curious to see. This is a, this is a free show. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering how many people from Wilbur are going to come out and check it out. I just got shown what our attendance can be as far as the capacity. It was like over a thousand that we can have. Mm -hmm. That'd be awesome. If, you know, more than a thousand people show up for our event, that'd be, that'd be tremendous. I mean, absolutely mm -hmm. tremendous. Cross your yeah. fingers, but you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and I'd be I'd be even happy with you know, a few hundred, you know. So mm -hmm. yeah, but, yeah. You know, I'm curious to what that's going to be, and then the match. There's a lot of mad, good matches, and you know, we're going to crown our first ever women's champion. Mm -hmm. We're right. going to have a, uh, a you know uh, a mini tournament. I'm mm -hmm. curious to see who, who do you who do you guys think is going to walk out with the belt? Who do you guys think? Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, it's, it's, uh, that's a difficult decision, right? There. It, it's it tough, is, one. isn't it? It's tough, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got four yeah. real good ones there, and so it should be. Oh, yeah, I, I think the <laughs> one match I'm looking forward to the most is uh, Paul Verk and Rampage Santana. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the number both, one. Of, both of them guys are are really good. So that that. Mm -hmm. And it seems like they match up really well too, so that's mm -hmm. it'll be a good match. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both evenly matched, and uh, for when I saw that, I was like, "Yeah, that's that's definitely gonna be a great match." And both both tall, solid dudes, and they've been uh, pretty much going it in the 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 Midwest territories. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Definitely. Uh, also, the triple threat, Ying, Blanco, uh, and GPA. Ying's getting a lot better. Um, just recently, he had a, um, a good match with us in Stillwater. And he would, I, you know, I was so proud of him because, you know, he's a good dude. Um, he's been working hard for us. And I think he has a lot of potential. I think he, he's still finding himself, I think. And once it, I think he'll, once he you know finds that last piece that he needs, he's gonna boom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take off. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, TJ, 
Tigre. Whoa, El Tigre. There's a name for the best. Tigre. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, shout out to you, El Tigre. I've been watching your stuff on uh, your Facebook and great stuff. Or no. Yeah, I did. I, uh, I saw him one time in, in person in uh, in Fergus Falls, and I was like, "That's a tall, solid luchador right there," and he's definitely a great talent. So, shout out to you, LT Gray. Yeah. All right, I'll let you go, Jesse. So, how were you able to land uh, Sterling Bond in MAW? I know he was uh, with uh, Tony Danucci for a period of time. Was he just, did he just have enough of the AWF and decide he, he wanted something new or? No, I can't speak for Sterling, but, uh, you know, a lot of these guys, they can kind of pick and choose wherever they want to work. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, he, he, you know, they're, you know, kind of like independent contractors where they, you know, pick and choose where they go and such. And, you know, you know, I thought he's a good fit for us and, Eli thought he was a good fit for us, and we like having him on our shows when we can. And it's just hard to get everybody on uh, on uh, you know our shows because you know we're all we're booked out through the summer, <laughs> so uh, yeah. Yeah. we can't use everybody. I'd love to use everybody. I really would, but you know you can only have like six or seven, eight matches on your card. Any more than that, and you're you're gonna blow everybody up. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I hope, yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to work with Sterling again. We'd like to have him back on our cards. I think he's. I love. I love the pineapple gimmick. You know? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's a silly. It's silly, but you know, it's something. Mm -hmm. I, I think he just. I think he just likes to have fun. I mean, last Hello, time Mary. I seen him. What last time I seen him? He was like a big heel and. And the other time I seen him was in Rochester, and it just seemed like he was getting over with the crowd. They seemed to really like him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's obviously definitely a great talent, and first saw him in Fergus Falls for Below Zero Wrestling. And, uh, yeah, great talent. His, uh, his uh, top rope cutter is insane. Insane, just how high he goes. I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> so, I'm yeah. worried every time he does it too. I'm worried every time he does it, he might slip, but he doesn't. Mm -hmm. That's good. <laughs> yeah, he's got got great balance, and the fact that he's doing that for his height too is like, you should be more of like a solid dude, but you're doing all these high flying moves, which is pretty incredible. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Looking through the comments on Instagram here, uh, Joseph uh, Theromaz says, uh, how about Tony Stone's finisher, basically a needle throw into a DDT? Oh, Ken? The DDT? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, no, yeah, nothing, Tony... wrong with, nothing wrong with a DDT. It's a classic. It never goes out of style. Unfortunately, it's used too much as a false finish nowadays. And I don't think it should be. Because, yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know, when Jake Roberts hit that, it's boom, nap city, you're done. It's over. One, two, three, we're home, you know. And I just, yeah. uh, it, yeah. mm -hmm. so, that's my thought of it. It's nice to see that Ken's bringing it back and using it as a finish. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's a move that has been used a, used, a lot, used a lot now, and it's it's basically just a move now. It's not a whole much of a finisher, but sometimes people do bring it back as a finisher or a signature. So, yeah. But yeah, Tony Tony Storm. She just debuted for uh, AEW last on Wednesday, I believe. Yeah, yesterday. So. Yep. I was, I was kind of assuming that she would. Is she? I mean, there's everyone's going to AEW, so Tony Storm is in AEW now. So yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people are getting a chance on AEW Dark to mm -hmm. get on there and get noticed. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, awesome. uh, yeah. All right, I'll let you go, Jesse. Hi, Don. All right, so let, when it comes to legends and uh, like other people that are working for like different promotions like impact and that 
how do you guys go about like getting them signed for your shows? Well, they have booking agents that you have to work with as well. Mm -hmm. so, you know, they have their booking information and such. And we contact them, and then uh, David usually does that. David's pretty good and you know, handles all that. And, um, you know, he speaks with the agent, and they work out a deal and what they need to do to come, you know, come on out and do a meet and greet with us and all that stuff. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you show that you're serious, it's, it's you know, and you're not just like that. Lost somebody trying to, I don't know, right? Whatever, 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 but if, if you, you're in serious talks with them, you can you'll, you'll get one in, so mm -hmm. yeah, and they, yeah. And they make money, they make money. <laughs> people come out to see them. I mean, uh, Brutus Beefcake, who we just had uh, with the Steel Domain Wrestling um, uh, show that we had together. The uh, beef drew us a big crowd, um, mm -hmm. and that yeah. was like I, I was surprised. I, I like beefcake, I do. He, he was one of my guys back when I was a kid, but I didn't know how well he was going to draw. And then you know we have a packed house, and almost you know, Brutus beefcake, and he um, Brutus almost ran out of eight by eleven. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, I know. You know, they're they're coming out and they're making money and then they you know they tell all the other legends about us and that you know if you guys want to make money you got to get on one of these shows and so then then they're helping us you know bring in fresh eyes you know eyes that never maybe even been to an indie show before you know a lot of people don't go out to indie shows but when they see that there's a name on the card that they recognize like Ken Anderson or Sergeant Slaughter or or just beefcake, you know, any of these names that draws, you know, your your casuals in. Mm -hmm. Never watched an indie show before, and then they stay and they watch the indie show, and they're like, "Whoa, what? What? This is amazing!" You know, and it, it, indie shows are a lot different feel than you know from WWE shows. You know, they're yeah. a lot more intimate, I guess you could say. You know, because mm -hmm. you're. You can sit wherever you want at some of them, or you're close to the ring. And you get to meet and greet with the wrestlers after the show, and the wrestlers are more in, you know, they're communicating to you verbally in there. You know, mm -hmm. that's always fun. That, but as a fan, to me, when I, you know, uh, uh, when I went to my first indie show, I was blown away because mm -hmm. I was having so much fun yelling at the wrestlers and doing that kind of stuff. <laughs> You couldn't do it at a WWE show because, like, the only way you could afford a, a ticket was up in the nosebleeds, and they can't hear you up there. <laughs> no. <laughs> so it, it's, it's cool. It's a lot of fun, and everyone's a lot of people, you know, come, and it's like a big party. So mm -hmm. they kind of yeah. catch on to the atmosphere, and it, it's good business. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, I really do uh, like how the how you MAW and you guys do that. Just having you got the regular so, but then you bring in some of the legends to at least get a bigger draw, and then expose to them to indie wrestling. And hopefully, next time they come back for more indie wrestling as well. So. Agreed. Yeah. Really, we like having repeaters, and we like having return fans, and we like hearing that they're, they're having a good time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's what motivates you. That's what motivates us. Like, letting us know that you're having fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you were talking about Brutus Beefcake, and yeah, I was at that event and got the meet and greet. And uh, like, I got up there, he was like, uh, I think I signed some cards for a friend, but then I want, the main thing I want to do was get a picture with them. So he's like, Yeah, come around the table. And he's like, Hey, help me up. I'm getting a little bit old here. So I'm like, so I was helping <laughs> Brutus Beefcake up out of his chair, which is just pretty cool. To just, yeah. Give him a handshake and get a picture with him. So awesome yeah. stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 He's one of the biggest draws back in the day of Hulk Hogan, WWE, and everything. So WCW and everything. So yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll let you go, Jesse. All right. So uh, I know uh, I'm going to do a little comparison here. Uh, Sure. When you guys were back in Rochester in October, it mm -hmm. seemed like to me that the audience wasn't really 
really unsure of who to cheer for and who to go for. But mm-hmm. over in Faribault, everybody was like all excited. So I don't know if everyone was just kind of nervous at the Rochester show or how uh, that all went. I think it's because it was our first time in Rochester. Mm-hmm. It wasn't fair, but we've been there before and they're, they know who some of the guys are. And then we have story mm-hmm. angles running out of there. Uh, the Rochester show, oh, we were nervous. I think that, that yeah, that was our first uh, fight TV. Um, so to say nervous would be an understatement. I know I don't get nervous very often anymore when it comes to wrestling, but that night I had like butterflies and the bats. We'll call them bats in my stomach. I was mm-hmm. so nervous. I thought I was going to puke. And I got to the ring and I'm up there in the ring and my stomach got so tight I thought I was going to pass out. I was that nervous. Um, and then finally after I got going I started to relax a little bit. But uh, that probably could have been a reason why in Rochester. A lot, I, I, I can't speak for everyone else, but I was nervous as heck. Because, <laughs> you know, I've never been on a yeah. pay-per-view before. I don't know how many people even bought the pay-per-view. I don't think it's many. But, you know, still that, that feeling like you're going live TV now. People are watching you live. That got to mm-hmm. me. That, that had mm-hmm. me. I, I'm, I, I can't speak for everyone else, but it might have affected them too. Right. I think mostly it has to do with that we've been in Florida before and people knew who we were, whereas opposed to Rochester, you know, aside from our, our regulars, maybe a lot of people didn't really have an idea who we were or who anybody was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. That was the first Spike TV show, but yeah, it was, yeah. It was a good show. So, yeah. And, now uh, I can do a no sweat. Now I can do a no sweat. Oh, fight TV, okay? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, We're going to uh, be on fight TV on the 9th, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, if you guys don't want to make the trip off of Wilmermania all the way that way, watch us on fight. Mm-hmm. There we go. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think it's pretty awesome that uh, the Defending Wrestling's on uh, fight TV now, and they're getting – that uh, kind of national attention right there, so or local national stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, someone in the comment section here uh, uh, from what is it? H A S T T E L T O Y Castle. Uh, he he says you look like Taylor. I what? You look like the WWF legend and Vader. I don't think you. I was that old. I was there to write that up, but I was like, well, maybe let's see what he thinks about it. So, yeah. I guess you have a Vader look. I guess I look like that. I don't, I don't know. It could be worse, yeah. I guess. I don't <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, I guess. I want to see how that works. Jesse's like uh, leaning into his camera. Are you taking a good look, Jesse? <laughs> what do you think, brother? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Please check in the camera. Yeah, you're screeching a lot right now, Jesse. Is that me or you? Oh, yeah. Huh? Is that you're you guys or is that me? No, I, I think it's not. I wasn't going to say anything, but it was super loud. Uh oh. Sounds like someone's munching on some Pringles. <laughs> yeah. It's always good at the beginning, and then it starts going towards the middle, and we don't know why it happens. But, yeah. Live TV, what well, can go wrong, will go wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. I'll put him on mute for a sec, and then we'll see what he does. But, uh... Okay, another question in the Instagram uh, comment section from Joseph Faramaz says, uh, can the WWE ever get out of the PG era? Well, the thing with WWE and the PG era is right now they are making bucket load of money. So Mm -hmm. if you're making fist over handfuls of money, um, or a handful of fists, whatever, uh, you know, why change what's working? Um, 
Mm-hmm. I think at times they step over the line. Yeah. Um, here and there, but um, as far as like you know, doing co- you know color or anything like that, they don't do much anymore. So I think it's more been. I think it's more impactful that way when they do do something that's not relatively PG, so to speak. Mm-hmm. You know, when they they drop a, a drop a you know like a, the B word or the mm-hmm. A word or anything like that. I don't know if I can swear on here. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I think when they I think when they they do that and they cross that border there, I think it's more impactful than every week you're getting that. Mm-hmm. And like I said, they're making so much money um, right now. It just I don't you know I think they made I can't I don't know the exact number, but I know that I heard, they made a ton of money last year, um, mm-hmm. even with the pandemic going on. So it's like you know it's not broken. Why fix it if it's making money? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, a few years ago, maybe it wasn't doing the best, but I think it, it's it's gotten better now. I think still not fully there with all the new talents that they bring on Raw from NXT, and then they just really don't use them. But I think what they're doing right now, they got – I mean, uh, uh, yeah, Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins are good examples of how they're – work in the PG era, and I think they're, yeah, doing a great job of that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, those are two really good dudes, and they're really good. The, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Kevin Owens' contract just expired, and he renewed his, you know, everyone was wondering why he didn't go somewhere else. You know, um, mm-hmm. he's making good money. Um, he doesn't have to go out and kill himself to get a reaction pretty much. And he, he has a lighter schedule, so to speak. Uh, well, not as far as traveling, but you know, he doesn't have to go out and do hardcore matches or anything like that and abuse his body as much. So that's gotta be appealing. And then, you know, he gets time with his kids. He's got a family to look out for. And, you know, if you know, you go, you go where the money is. Yeah. They're paying yeah. a good amount of money to stay. Um, you know, it's really a no brainer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, Jets, you want to try out your mic again? Yeah, is it, does it seem to be working a little better now? Yeah, it's oh, good now. Did. All right, yeah, so we can go now. Good job, Jesse. <laughs> All right, yeah, let's go, yeah. Jesse. <laughs> let's go, Jesse. Let's go, Jesse. Oh, yeah, that's my thought on WWE in the PG era. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you know, Jesse. We were... And then you have AEW as the alternative. You know, if you're sick of WWE's PG, you know, goofy cartoon like show, you can go watch AEW, which is a good alternative. So that's the thing mm-hmm. with wrestling nowadays. If you're sick of watching one show, you don't have to watch it. You can go turn over to a different promotion, see if they have what you're looking for. And if that one doesn't, you can go look at another one. Or, or you could be like mm-hmm. me and watch almost all of them, or follow almost all of them. So, or run your own. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesse, we were talking about uh, if WWE will ever get out of the PG era, and I think Brian was saying it's doing good right now. Why? Why change it? So, yeah. Yeah. Why? Why change it? I mean, they seem to be doing well with it. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's all, all right. it is. Money. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Vince, Vince yeah. McMahon ain't dumb. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> he, so, well, he knows what's going on. So, <laughs> yeah. Vince, if you're uh, watching, I'm putting you over. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's go, Vince. Uh, <laughs> someone I know who's a, a big Vince McMahon, uh, or Vince McMahon fan, and someone you know is. Uh, Rampage Santana, we've talked to him a lot about Vince McMahon, and he's like, I think we asked him, where do, uh, where do you see yourself in five years? And he's like, WWE working for Vince McMahon, and Vince McMahon's the best heel of all time and all that. So he's got high hopes of yeah. Vince. He's a, he was a really good heel. Really good heel. Um, I still, I still think that's that some of the best TV right there with him and, and, and Austin. Just uh, the two of them just fed off each other, and it was just uh, it was 
it was gold. And you know, you, they, you, it was that good that everyone tried to replicate that. And you always see it nowadays where you have the the bad guy boss. And it's so cliche now, like, oh, the, the boss is the bad guy and the baby face is going to overcome him. And it's become so cliche in wrestling now. But that's where it started. And everyone wanted to duplicate it because it was so good and it drew. It drew big money. But I think you just have to have the right two people, though. You can't always just take two people and put them into those spots. You have to just have those you know, the right characters. And Austin was the good foil to Vince and vice versa. So mm -hmm. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right. Oh, you go, Jesse. All right. So rumor has it that you're not a big fan of the system. Gosh. Oh, <laughs> I knew this was going to come up. The system. Uh -oh. Well, the system. what can I say about the system? Uh, that's not accurate. I am a fan of the system. I'm a huge fan of the system. I'm not a fan of what how he conducts himself in his matches, so to speak. I think he's a very talented individual and he doesn't need to take shortcuts and such. Yeah, I, think he, I think he can win his matches on his own merit, but he chooses to take shortcuts. Hmm. That's what I'm not a fan of. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the fact that he just seems to not understand what my name is. I don't know how we get... <laughs> Craig out of Brian. Um, I thought my hearing was going bad, but maybe he's been playing <laughs> a little too loud and hearing his ears. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got to call a spade a spade, though. Uh, he's good. Real good. Mm -hmm. he's yeah. Good at, yeah. He's good at what he does. Um, I tell that to. I tell him that to his face. Mm -hmm. I have told it to him to his face. Oh okay, yeah. I mean, we always we always get mixed uh, reactions since uh, you. I was at the the show that the Mount Steeder where uh, he won the MAW title, and it kind of looked like you weren't uh, a fan of that. I wasn't a fan of the way he did it. Mm -hmm. Okay, but yeah. Speaking of fans, uh, I wanted to bring a fan on to talk to you about. Uh, the system. He's a big system fan, and was wondering if oh, yeah. he could ask you a question. So here sure. he is, right here. Craig. <laughs> what uh -oh. do you think? I don't know who that is. Yo, really? You don't know who this is? Okay, <laughs> for sure. What do you think about Rampage breaking mine, Johnny Oxbow, and the system's neck this past weekend at DPW? Oh, I didn't know this was going to be the fan. Oh, wow, uh, I was unaware that your <laughs> neck was broken. He broke um, mine and the system's neck. Broke yours I and the system's word neck. From the system. He said that he broke like every single vertebrae in his in his neck, and he might. This is this might be career ending, Craig. Mm -hmm. What do you what do you have to say about that? Uh, I I think that you guys are both full of it. Do you see this? Oh, I don't like have. A, I don't have no doctor's note, no nothing. Mm. Well, you'll. He's definitely going to be hearing from my lawyer because I'm not even a wrestler. It doesn't even look like a neck brace. What is that? <laughs> it is definitely a neck brace. It is one of those inflatable neck braces. Like because one of those neck cushions we wear on a plane. What is that? <laughs> no, the neck cushions just go around. This is. You see this? You see this? It's got three different stages. It has to hold my neck in place. I cannot like physically move my neck in any other way. Oh, well, I'm mm. very sorry to hear that. It's terrible. Mm. So is there going to be any implications for Rampage? Absolutely not. What? Got a number one contendership match on Wilmer Mania on April 9th. So uh, he went what? To that. he's going to get another shot, which he rightfully deserves because uh, if you go back and watch the tape, guys, I don't know if you guys saw this, but at the end of the match, after the time limit expired, System tapped yeah. out. No, that, he was not tapping. He tapped. You see, no, the only reason that he was tapping is to get Rampage off of him because he knew that Rampage is supposed to be a good guy. And you know what? He's not a good guy. I don't understand why people like that man. He's their front and center. I know a tap out when I see one. That boy tapped out. 
No, he 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 heard the bell. He was like, "Oh, the match is over. Let me get out of this thing." Yo, Rampage, let me out. And I had to break it up. I think your brain. I'm not a wrestler. A little I had too to break tight, it up. cutting off oxygen to the brain. Loosen up, buddy. It, it might mm. be, but you know what? This is all Rampage's fault. Mm. He's got another opportunity to become the number one contender again. He can do it. We'll have System Rampage too. No, not a chance. He, there's no way he wins that match. Uh, you know what? I might have to show up at Wilmer Mania just to make sure that it doesn't happen. I'll be sure to try to remember you. Okay, yeah. Craig, you definitely know me. You've caught me in bed with your wife multiple times now. She's oh. you've heard her screaming my name. <laughs> oh. That's why she's crabby all the time, then, I say. This. Yeah, because she's, she wishes she was with me. Oh. But she, she has to oh. be with you. Oh, okay. Oh, man. I don't know if that's professional, Johnny. I'm sorry, Craig. I, you know what? That was unprofessional on my part. I got a little heated. Johnny? I'm a little bit sore. Is it Johnny? It's Johnny. Okay. I'll try to remember that. We've had multiple conversations in the back. You know my name is Johnny. And you know who else knows that my name is Johnny and who will also be hearing from my lawyers? That twit, Andrew, the commentator, oh. he, hmm. he's he been – he's had it – I've had it up to here with him. He's a, he's on my last nerve. He, hmm. he pulled my beautiful hair and tried to drag me to the back. And I don't even want to get in to what he was trying to do in the back. But luckily oh. I was able to come out and support the system for him retaining the title this lap, this past weekend. And that's all that matters is that the system never fails. By the skin of his teeth. Didn't win the match. Mm, that's remember. besides the point. Didn't win the he match. has the belt. He still has the belt. He's still a champ. Always will be the champ. The system never fails. Craig, let me hear you say it. Do you trust the system? I'm not down with the system. I just heard you say, though, that you are a fan of the system, and that's basically like trusting the system. I have been watching your interview just to see if I can get anything on you. And I did – Dude. I have good hearing, mm -hmm. and I heard you say that you're a fan of the system. I'm a fan of the system. So not you trust the system. I'm not down with the so system. you trust the system? Absolutely not. Hmm. I trust it like Brian. I trust it was about as far as I can throw him. No. So pretty far. You're you're a big strong man, Craig. Now, now, now we're making compliments. Okay. You know, I'm just trying to make sure that my, my that my boy system is taken care of, and and the fact that that he might have a career ending injury from this man, and you're just going to hand him another title shot potentially. If his serious is absurd. If, this if this injury is as serious as you're stating, maybe we do need to uh, think about vacating the championship. No, 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 no. That's not what I said oh. at all. That, we're oh. still waiting on final results. <laughs> We're still oh, waiting okay. on final so it's results. It's not that bad. It's not that no, bad. No, we're waiting on final results. You, you hold okay. your horse oh. there. Well, okay. Okay. Because <laughs> I, I, I don't want him to feel like he's obligated to make any shows or anything. You know, I want him to be okay. Well, yeah, he's definitely not showing up at Wilmer Mania with this condition, in his condition. That breaks my heart. Oh, yeah, I'm oh, sure. Man. But you know who will be there? Who will be there? I'll be there. You'll be there. Yes. I Craig? Can't I can't wait. I know you can't, Craig. I can't wait. I'm you your bring, favorite you person. That, you bring that neck brace, too. <laughs> well, I have to from my doctor saying that I need to wear this, so I will be wearing this the entire show. Hmm. I'll save a seat for you. Thank you. Can I sit hmm. next to you, Craig? Absolutely not. I heard absolutely, and you cut out. Uh, <laughs> but before you can say it again, bye. Have a good day, Craig. Bye. I always – what's his name again? Johnny, uh, I, think was, I think it was Johnny. Uh, doesn't matter. Yeah, I didn't know it was Johnny Oxbow. He said his name was Johnny, and I don't know. He just showed up. I didn't know it was his manager. So, man, this Jesse is is, is system to the ring a lot. Filming system. He's obsessing the system. Just, I don't know what else he does though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's quite the character. He's. He's in, interrupted a few shows now, and I don't. <laughs> now I, I thought he was. Well, thanks for watching. Time. I appreciate you watching. 
Yeah, I am. Say hi to the yeah. system. Tell him I hope he feels better. Mm-hmm. Rest, rest that little neck. As well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, Maybe I was there. I'm one contender waiting for you after Wilmer Mania. Get ready. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I uh, uh, but yeah, I'll also uh, continue with the system. Uh, we had him on a show a few days before Discover Pro Wrestling, and he he said, uh, I think he's gearing it more towards Discover Pro Wrestling, but he did say, uh, there's a conspiracy going around about him. What are your thoughts on that? And conspiracy of what? What? I don't know. Maybe there's not using them right, or they're 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 making them fight unfair battles or something like that. All I can tell you is right now he's our champion. Yeah, that's he's having true. any uh, other issues and other promotions. I don't know anything about that, but I can tell you right now he's our champion in our promotion. Mm-hmm. And when I don't see eye to eye on him on a lot of things, and mostly it's because I want him to be uh, to live up to his full potential. And again, mm-hmm. not taking no shortcuts, fighting his own battles, not having little weasels film him and talk for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think System should have been on here talking about System instead of Johnny, but uh, System's a busy man, so I guess. I didn't even know Johnny was going to be on here, but he wanted he <laughs> oh got his he wheels weaseled himself on here somehow. <laughs> that security yeah. again. Security. Yeah, what are we going to do about that, Jesse? That people are just hopping I, on our podcast now. Yeah, oh, yeah. Bring them on. You got more? Bring them. <laughs> Bring them on. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's only almost ten people. o'clock. I've only been up since five a.m. That's fine. <laughs> Bring them on. <laughs> Bring them all on. <laughs> Well, we're we're gonna have to hire Jerry, I think. <laughs> we'll hire Jerry and Pam. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh man. All right. I'll let you go, Jesse. All right. So I'm gonna fun you a little bit now, Brian. Uh, over in Fairbolt, you were uh, interviewing Jerry Allrecker, and when he got in the ring, he trapped. Mm-hmm. But he claimed that you tripped him. I don't he think you, I tripped him. Yeah, I don't think you no. tripped him. He and didn't he, say that. Did he say that? And, and then, then he said something about cream cheese that you owe them cream cheese or something. Mm-hmm. I, I don't believe it myself. I don't. I don't know either. <laughs> you watch the footage. I obviously didn't trip him. He, he tripped on his own. He needs, he's a little bit of a klutz sometimes. And when he gets in the yeah. ring, he tends to not yeah. watch his footing. And he tends to. I don't know anything about a cream cheese, though, but I'll have to ask him about that. It sounds interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you definitely have to ask him about that because we're, we're just baffled like you are right now. We don't know what's going on about maybe uh, what. Uh, Jerry's got a conspiracy now, so yeah. <laughs> Cream <Everyone's> cheese conspiracy. <laughs> Everyone has a conspiracy now. <laughs> oh, oh, conspiracy of Midwest wrestling. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. There's a lot, of, a lot of conspiracies. Me, <laughs> Jesse Ventura, the host of show. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Conspiracy. Well, theory. Cream che- I can't do a Jesse Ventura impersonation. <laughs> the cream cheese impression. Uh, yeah, I can't. <laughs> I watched an interview with uh or not much of an interview, but uh Chris Van Vliet and Karrion Cross were hanging out and Karrion Cross had a pretty good uh uh Jesse Ventura impression. I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. So yeah, yeah. He was doing it while Chris was working out, and he's like, he was he was lifting up the weights, and I was worried that he was gonna get hurt. He's like, he's laughing the entire time with the, the impression, but yeah, that's funny. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, what makes you most excited to be a part of Midwest All Star Wrestling? Um, good question. Uh, for me, it's just um, when we started it, when Eli approached me about starting it, um, funny stories, I almost told Eli no, that I wasn't interested because um, I had retired from wrestling of, uh, about a year prior to that. Um, 
And I was starting to kind of get used to my life without wrestling in it. And then Eli approached me and we sat down, we talked about it. And I almost told him, no, that I'm just not interested. But uh, the more I thought about it, um, the things we talked about got me excited was that giving the young guys a chance to a stage to perform on pretty much. Because, you know, the academy had opened up and a lot of these guys were still training and they, they, you know, there was just not that many places to work, so to speak, or there were, but, you know, we wanted to give them a, a good and we wanted to use production. A lot of places weren't using production at that time. And like we wanted to do that and, and make characters and just let young guys shine and get over and that was for me that was that that was what i wanted and what i love about it is just giving the the guys an opportunity so cuz i was there I, I know what that's like you know you're you're young you're starting off you, you're not sure where to go or you know who to work for and it's intimidating so you know giving some guys you know hey here's 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 what i want you to do and you go do it you know giving them something to basically to call their own and, you know, show their passion off and kick ass. Mm-hmm. A lot yeah, of guys yeah. have been bull by the horns and done that. And it just makes me so proud. Like I said, system and rampage just a couple nights ago, 30 minutes going out mm-hmm. there and tearing it up 30 minutes. And they had the crowd in the palm of the hands for 30 minutes. That's a hard feat to do nowadays in this day and age where everyone's got the attention span of, uh, I don't know, that much. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. nobody was on their cell phones unless they were recording it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's what gets me excited, guys, getting opportunities and taking full advantage of those opportunities. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I feed off it a little bit. Not to, I guess I, you could say I live vicariously a little bit. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That's a good way to put it, yeah. Yeah, MAW definitely the probably the top most exciting company out there. So, yeah, it's definitely cool. To Thank, hear you. The, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for trying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. I'll let you go, Jesse. All right. So, has... So have you guys talked to Horace the Psychopath about maybe fixing things? I know he didn't show up for the Fairbolt show. He didn't show up for Fairbolt, and there were other shows he didn't show up for, too. Um, mm-hmm. That, honestly, uh, I, I know Horace. I've worked with Horace before. Um, I like Horace a lot, and I, I respect him, and I look up to him. Um because he, he's a really good guy. I don't know what's going on. Um, I hope, you know, whatever it is that's going on, I, I hope that he can overcome it yeah. and get through it. And, you know, for me, honestly, you know, once he once he gets his head on straight, I don't know the full details. I don't know what's going on. But whatever it is, if he gets his head on straight, you know, I – you know, I, I can't speak for Eli or David, but I personally would just, I'd like to, you know, if he's serious and wants to give it another go, I mean, he, he's he's Horace the psychopath, right? You know, you, right. I like to think that the door we could keep open. And, um, you know, it, it's just sad that he burned a lot of bridges and it broke my heart, actually. Mm-hmm. You know, someone you look up to lets you down like that. Um, but... Mm-hmm. Whenever, you know, whatever he's got going on, whatever demons he's fighting, um, I hope he can overcome them. And I'd like to, uh, you know, if he wants to talk business and we can all sit down and talk serious. Um, I welcome that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It's, I hope, I mean, I hope he uh, is doing good. And I know some people have associated his absence with the uh, negativity and not wanting to work with them, but I, I hope, I hope he is willing to at least uh, work through whatever he's doing right now. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, we've mentioned it to a couple MAW people, and uh, we even mentioned it to Pete King, who who show he was supposed to be on a few weeks ago now. So, yep. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And I kind of was keeping in contact with our photographer, and just like you know, let me know if horror shows up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because yeah, okay. I was I was very anxious to, to see if he was going to show up, and, mm-hmm. and then he didn't and that just kind of like well oh, horse what's going on buddy mm-hmm. yeah yeah uh, yeah definitely uh uh what are your thoughts on sting jumping from the crowd in his 60s <laughs> <laughs> makes me think i can do it then <laughs> hell sting can do it in his 60s i'm only 39 and my shoulder's feeling a lot better and i'm I'm trying to lose the weight, <laughs> you know. Um, unfortunately, mm-hmm. you know, that's been a struggle. That's part of the reason I retired in the first place was my my weight issues and such, along with my shoulder. But um, mm-hmm. just seeing him do that, just it's amazing. I, I'm happy for him because I didn't like the way he went out in WWE. I didn't yeah. like how they used him, and um, so when he announced his retirement, I was like. That's not how the stinger should go out. Not like that. And the fact that he's getting this chance in AEW to still, and he's still in stuff that's just, oh my gosh, for someone his age, like that, jumping from the rafters and okay. threw a bunch of tables onto a guy and he's able to walk away from it and he's not, he's okay. That's it's awesome. I, I love Sting. I'm a, I'm a big Sting fan. And, um, I'm glad that he's getting the uh, the probably the the send off that he deserves. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sting has definitely been doing a great job in AEW and managing uh, young Darby Allen has been pretty interesting to see as well. So, yeah, I like Darby. I love. I do like Darby. I just he looks like a 12 year old kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like, true. But uh, he's really good. I like I like his stuff. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it works. Mm-hmm. People love the face paint. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, kids, he def- definitely kids love them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The kids love him a lot. So, and his face paint is face paint is uh definitely unique and got the the skeleton kind of punk rock like CM Punk said it punk rock style to him. So, I wonder if he, yeah. does he do that himself. He does. It's a hell of a good job. Yeah, I'm not. Sh- I mean, yeah, I don't know if I, he. I'm, I'm assuming he does. I'm assuming he does. A lot of the guys I know do their own face makeup. Like I watch mm-hmm. X do it in the back, and X is just drawing all oh. over his face and everything <laughs> like that. And that's a lot of work, <laughs> you know. It's like a lot of commitment <laughs> to, to paint your face. You gotta, you know, live the gimmick, brother. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, X, another guy who has awesome face paint. He was at DPW and he is sporting the, the green, purple, black uh, paints. So it's interesting to see. Hell of a gimmick. Hell of a gimmick. Why that boy doesn't have merchandise? X, man, yeah. get some merch, brother. Get those, mm-hmm. get those masks. Get those t shirts. Even money mm-hmm. on the table. Do it. Yeah, yeah. Do it. Now. Do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My best yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think that last show was the first time I've ever seen him at a merch table. I'm like, wow, you I've never seen you out here. This is pretty cool. And I tried to get a picture with him. And he's like, no, but I guess I'll take a picture. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. That sounds like X. That sounds like X. <laughs> Yeah, he said this wasn't the money maker. His wrestling was the money maker. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. Well, he threw that, that kid at the DPW show. He threw that kid around <laughs> like a rag doll. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was throwing uh, our. Too bad. Seems like water. cities are copyrighted. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that. I think that first German suplex, he was in the left corner and threw, like pretty much threw him all the way across. I'm like, oh my god, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it was, it was tremendous, just, absolutely tremendous. 
Mm-hmm. But yeah, even that's uh, yeah. A few years ago, he was just start starting out as a, a independent wrestler. He was, I would say, he was kind of used like a, a independent jobber. He wasn't doing a whole lot, but now I think he's got a. He's definitely getting up there in the ranks, and he's the leader of the the movement now, right? Yes. He is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's getting better and better every time I watch him too. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. um, he's fun. he's getting comfortable more and more out there. I can tell. And uh, dude's built like uh, like the last time I saw him, he's like looking looking good. You know, he's jacked and uh, he's big, mm-hmm. and that's good. That's good. You know, you need guys like that. And like I said, the the gimmick is. It's just very unique. It's a very good gimmick, um, and he he had, he's got a chance to really make it big. I think with it, mm-hmm. especially yeah. when he continues throwing guys like that around. I don't, I, I find that amusing. I don't know why. I just... <laughs> yeah, I put yeah. X against some skinny guys, and I wouldn't throw them around. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we'll payday. We'll give them a nice payday. Yeah, well, yeah, okay. Um, we'll just maybe throw them around a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not even watching anymore. <laughs> I don't. Know. It says there's two people watching. It doesn't say specifically who is. Two people. Yes. Two people. <laughs> yeah. Ratings are skyrocketing. <laughs> we did have a they're probably yeah. gonna watch. They're probably not gonna watch until tomorrow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, they usually watch it the next day, or if I show a clip of something, they. They watched that instead, but we did get a lot though. We had uh, we had uh, like eight or nine people on here at once, so that's pretty good. Yeah, nice, getting man. close. <laughs> yeah, and then like I think we had like three or four on Instagram as well. So yeah, nice. mm-hmm. and uh, also on the topic that we were talking about, staying uh Joseph Fairmont says, I agree, WWE didn't u- utilize Sting like they should have. So, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely. I honestly, I understand why he put Triple H over at that Mania because he thought that was going to be his last match. Mm-hmm. From what I understand in an interview, he said he thought that was going to be his last match and he thought that was the right thing to do, put Triple H over. But then, oh. then they brought him back and they had him work with Rollins. I honestly would have liked to see. I would have liked to have seen Sting get a run with the with the belt. Mm-hmm. I would, I really yeah. thought that would have been really cool, but they, for some reason, had to make it about WCW. And mm-hmm. how many years had it been since WCW went out of business and they bought them? I didn't understand that. It's like, yes, he yeah. worked for WCW, but WCW is done. It's been gone for a long time. It doesn't need to be about WCW. It could just be mm-hmm. about Sting. Yeah. So yeah that's that's... But we got a cool moment out of it at Mania with the NWO and DX. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah, there was a, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, huge pop for both factions when they came out. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 10 years too All late, right. but, you know, 10. Yeah. <laughs> it's still kind of just cool to see, I guess. You know, yeah, long time fans enjoyed it. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it, yeah, a little later, but I think for as late as it was, it, I think it worked out pretty good. So both were pretty good shape. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, I'll let you go, Jesse. All right. So May 13th, you guys are going to be back in Fairbolt again. Mm -hmm. Um, Who are you looking forward to seeing on that show? Good question. Um, You know, I'm kind of curious. I'm kind of, I'm kind of looking forward to the uh, the bad role models. Mm. I just want to see them eat dog food. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's be pretty entertaining. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm looking forward to, you know. Okay. Yeah. Was, on the poster, definitely a lot of a lot of guys on there and a lot of female talents and looks like it's stacked cards. So yeah. Mm-hmm. That's don't just forget, 
don't forget Cowboy Bob Orton too. <laughs> right, Cowboy Bob will be there. That's a that's a name from my childhood there too. Yep, so. I I remember him. So mm -hmm. it'll it'll be fun to talk to him a little bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. he'll bring the cast with him. He's yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say that. He's going to have the cast with him. Oh, man. 40 years later, he still got the cast on. <laughs> Live the gimmick. Live the gimmick. Live the gimmick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I guess well, hopefully uh, hopefully, System and Oxbow don't do that, though. <laughs> the neck brace. Oh, man. That would be pretty interesting to wrestle with the neck brace on. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I love. I, like I said before, I love the Fairbolt shows. Um, I love the atmosphere. I love the fans. They're so. They're just very vocal, <laughs> and we like we, we <laughs> like we 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 like it when you're vocal and you're bantering and yelling and screaming and cheering and just don't throw stuff. Don't do that. That's bad. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, just a fun place. Uh, I enjoy. I, I look forward to like we're going. Hey, we're going to Faribault. Yes, I'll make that forty-five minute drive. Hell yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, um, okay. Uh, Joseph Fairmonds on Instagram says. Uh, well, we've actually been talking about this a little bit over our shows now, but uh, rest in peace, Scott Hall. Any thoughts about his career? The best wrestler to never win a world title. Um, I, I When I heard about his condition, I was really upset because he was one guy I was hoping eventually that we could bring in because I would have loved to have talked to him. I just just to yeah. pick his brain. He seems like one of the smart the one of the smartest guys in the business and who just got it. Got the business, understood it. Um and I would just love to have sat down and had a conversation with him just to kind of soak up that knowledge. Cuz I he just seemed like a very smart guy. And yeah. um I just I didn't I just didn't I didn't want him to go, <laughs> you know. I don't want any of them to go. So you know, I don't want anybody to pass away. It's the most tragic thing that could ever happen. And you know, he had a lot of, of friends and family, and um, it, it just you know, it's hard when that happens. And, but mm -hmm. it just goes to show you that life is short. You know, you know, live life to the fullest every day. So mm -hmm. may he rest in peace. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we've uh, yeah talked about him on our other shows, and we did do a tribute show uh, about a week ago now, and just pretty much watched uh, old old footage of him, uh, WCW, WWE, early Indies, Japan, uh, Mexico, and Puerto Rico, and yeah, it was just awesome to see his way of or his style of wrestling and his character. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, there's a, uh, yeah, Joseph Fairmonds also says, uh, uh, would, would Special K make a good, uh, in-ring name? It's what I call my brother-in-law. His name is Kenneth. <laughs> and I, I, I just, uh, I don't know how, uh, why I just started calling him Special K. Yeah, yes, I do think that'd be a good name, actually, yeah. That'd be a good name. Yeah, we'll okay. Special K. Some, come out with some special K bars. You know. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Start throwing them out cool. like the the booty. Might have to fight my brother-in-law for it, but if you you want to grow with it, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brian Sager approves of the special K in-ring nickname <laughs> or nickname. Thumbs up. <laughs> well, thumbs up right there. Oh yeah. Uh, all right. Oh, you go, Jesse. All right. We'll we'll uh, do one more question, then we'll let let Brian go. Um, so my last question to you is about Mick Karch. 
Yeah. Do you think? Do you think that uh, WWE or WCW should have had him as a broadcaster? Yes, I do. I think that that was a missed opportunity. I think he definitely would have fit in with the WCW. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you know, I just um, you know, well, you know, they they missed the opportunity, and we're thankful that we have him on our team because he's very knowledgeable and he's a name, a recognizable name and he's been around for a long time and he knows, uh, he knows that he knows what to do. So it's, it's easy to work. It's easy to work with someone like that. And he's a, he's a gentleman. Um, he's a class act. Um, he, do, he doesn't act like, uh, you know, a, a diva or anything like that. You know, you, <laughs> you, might, you might get some diva Mac. Get around a long time, and they might try to, you know, big time you. But he doesn't do that at all. He's yeah. just so, so you know, it's nice to have someone like that for yeah. the guys to talk to. It. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I think I, I think that's a lot of things that I think more of the guys should do is when you get guys like this on the show, you should try to sit down and talk to them and try to, you know, get that one-on-one time to you know, learn something. These guys have been around a long time. Soak it mm-hmm. in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, Mick Carson, I first saw him at uh, Steel Domain Wrestling in uh, 2017. I didn't, I didn't know he was in previous promotions before, and I was like just watching him on YouTube. He's definitely got an awesome voice, and definitely able to get the uh, people over when he was announcing. And now that he's back announcing, it's awesome to have him have him part of the MAW team. So, yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, but those are our questions. I just I don't want to run down quick. Uh, you guys sure. announced a, a lot of uh, MAW upcoming shows. I just want to share some uh, posters of that. Let me get that right there. Yeah, okay. um, well, first we've been talking about obviously Wilmer Mania. Uh, Wilmer Mania three. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, look at that. The great card. Uh, Rampage versus Real Drago. Hornswoggle's there. Uh, Medusa will be there. Yeah, Paul. Oh, this Ver- is the old poster, too. There's an updated one. Oh, there is. This one has Drago against Santana on it. It's now actually Paul. Oh, yeah. That's, oh, yeah. that's okay. So, the, yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it will be Rampage versus Paul Verk and. Uh, what is is Drago still on the show now? Or yes, he'll be in the tag match. It's going to be uh, oh, they switched them. Okay, yeah, so it's going to be Hornswoggle and Nick Colucci against uh, Drago and Cordova. Oh, okay, all right, yeah, that should be an awesome, awesome uh, match right there. An awesome show. Uh, Speaking of our another- posters, I want to do a shout out to David Wheeler who does most of our posters. He, he does a really good job of everything. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've been, exactly. I've been hearing a lot about his name, and he's he's definitely doing a lot if he's designing this. So, yeah, very shout talented. out to Dave Cooler. Mm-hmm. And then uh, it's not necessarily in order, but we got uh, uh, MAW Free For All, June 18th, uh, the Cottage, Cottage Grove. Grove. Yeah. Not at the Armory, but in Cottage Grove. Mm-hmm. Strawberry mm-hmm. Fest, yeah. That should be Strawberry. a fun one. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks you got your uh, MAW roster on there, Leonard Literacy on there, and uh, yeah, it looks like a pretty good card right there. Uh, what else was there? Uh, June twenty fifth, uh, MAW is going to Wadena. There's I've only seen this poster so far, but you have uh, any information on that? Uh, none at the moment, but what you see is what we have so far. But we'll be announcing matches as the closer we get to it. So, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, yeah. And then also, uh, you announced this like I think it was yesterday, uh, MAW yeah. Back Channel Mania, June 19th. Uh, where was that? The oh, Spring yeah, Park, Minnesota. Yep, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, David just sent uh, sent uh, me and Eli something about this show today, and I, I don't think I can announce it yet. Oh, okay. But someone else is coming, and it's a, it's a name I think you guys will be excited about. Good deal. Okay. 
Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I can't, can't wait to hear that. Check it out on the MEW our Midwest all-star wrestling Facebook channel is where they have all their information. So yeah. But yeah. Claws get the claws going to be on their AWA legend. there in Von Yeah. Rash. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we yeah. the claw somewhere. Let's go. <laughs> Put it on oh, the yeah. system. Oh no. <laughs> Put it on the system. <laughs> that other guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if Johnny and System want any part of the claw, <laughs> but if they, if they cross paths, we'll let see. I'd pay money for them to do it, though. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> All right, but yeah, that's the shows that I've seen so far, and the information you guys have put out. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah right. Keep che- checking our website, MidwestAllStarWrestling.com, and our Facebook as well. Um, we got a lot more coming this summer. Like I said, we're, we're going to be going hard in the summer and we got, we got some really good shows and some, some surprises in store. So, um, one I'm really looking forward to is in Danbury and I can't say it yet, but you'll, you guys will find out soon enough. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, also one more poster. Uh, I, I don't have an up right now, but, uh, uh, New Richmond, Wisconsin. Lex Luger is announced to be there. So off, the total awesome. package, and I'm bummed I can't make that one. I'm, at, I'm gonna be at my buddy's wedding, and he's getting married that day. And like, this is how much I love you, buddy, because I'm gonna pass up doing the show with Luger. And... Mm. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I don't think, think I don't appreciate being a part of your wedding. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. But yeah, it was awesome having you on. Brian Sager right here. Awesome information that you shared and stories. So uh yeah. yeah. You wanna close off, Jesse? Yeah, we definitely wanna have you back when you're ready to uh make the announcement. Maybe you can come on and make your announcement on the show for people that would like to hear it. Yeah, definitely. Love to. This was a lot of fun, guys. I never, never, I've been on podcasts before, but never a live one. So thanks oh, to the yeah. two people that stuck around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you for being on. And uh, yeah, have you on possibly in the future and uh, see you at the next MAW event. So, I'd love to. Yeah. Wilmer Mania 3, April 9th, Wilmer, Minnesota. Free, free, free. Yeah. All right. Hope All you right, have uh, a great night, Brian. You too. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you bet. Take care. <laughs> yeah. Bye-bye.